Welcome everyone for another lead code problem. Today's problem is problem 128, longest consecutive sequence. And this is one of the problems in line 75 list. So the problem description says we are given an unsorted array of integers. And we have to return the length of the longest consecutive element sequence. Okay. And our algorithm has to be in order of n time. Okay, so it has to be an efficient algorithm. So let's go to the example. As you can see, this is our input. These numbers, 100, 4, 200, 1, 3, 2. And the answer is the longest consecutive sequence, as you can see, is 1, 2, 3, and 4, right? So the longest consecutive sequence is 4. Uh, for the second example, you see that we have these numbers. Like, I think there are 10 numbers. And there are also some duplicates. Obviously, we'll consider for a sequence, we'll consider just one of them. So as you can see, we have like 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? We have all of them. So this is from 0 to 8. There are like 9 numbers and 9 consecutive numbers. So the output is going to be 9. Okay. So although this asks for an efficient solution of order of n, we can start thinking about some naive solutions and that sometimes actually help us to get into a or think about a better algorithm. So let's talk about the more uh, the brute force algorithm or the most naive algorithm. So the brute force algorithm is like we start reading, if we start reading from uh, reading each number and try to build a sequence out of it, uh, say, we are just reading all the numbers from left to right. And every time we read a number, we try to find the next number. So for example, say we read zero. Okay, so we start with zero, think that zero is the start of the sequence. So next we look for one, is there one? So we go through the whole array. Uh, this going through the whole array takes like order of n time, right? Order of n time. And then finally we find one, as you can see, we can find one, right? Okay, so after that, so we are still actually uh, staying at index zero and we found one, then we'll find two, right? And then we will actually read again for read the whole array again and we will find two. So basically these sequence, as you can see, this will go all the way to eight, right? and uh, we'll find everything till eight. Every time we are like for every number, we are uh, reading like order of n times to find the number. Uh, and still we are like, as you can see, we are just here, still we are here, right? So it's order of n and then the sequence length might, might be uh, maximum n. So for finding a sequence of n, uh, we'll need order of n into order of n. That is an order of n square, right? And we, as you can see, we are doing it for every number. So starting from this index, we, uh, in the worst case, we are running an order of n square search to find the sequence. And then we'll move to the next number and we'll start to mm, create another sequence starting from three, right? Three, four, so basically order of n square and we'll do it for each num each index, right? So for n indices, it will be order of n cube. So this is order of n cube algorithm. And after we find the sequence, we will just count the um, length of the sequence and compare with it and compare it with the previous length the sequence. So this is a naive algorithm of n cube. Now let's try to find a better way. Uh, what about um, sorting the elements? Actually sorting the elements will give me some uh, advantage. So say if I sort this, I will get one, two, three, four, uh, hundred and two hundred. Okay, so this will take order of n log n, right? Okay, once we sort this, next what we do is, uh, 
So we will sort order of n, and then next, what we'll do is we'll start reading. And every time I read, I will check if the previous element is uh, just my immediate pre like is one less than me, right? So once we go here, so once we reach here, two will check if one is just one less than two. Yes, that means it's a sequence. Already the sequence length is two, right? Okay. And then we'll read, come here and read three. Uh, three says, okay, two is my um, previous number. So the sequence length is now updated to three, right? Then we'll read four. And four will check if the previous number is one less. Yes. So the sequence length is updated to four. Next, we will read 100, right? So it will check the previous number. And as you can see, the previous number is not one less than 100. So that means the sequence. So already we'll keep save this in here to the max. So the max sequence length is four. And once we reach 100, we'll start another sequence length. So this sequence length is will be just one. Next, we move to 200. And as you can see, this is also a beginning of the sequence. So we'll uh, make a sequence of one, but none of them is more than four. So that means in the second step, we are just reading throughout the sorted array in order of n time. And every time I'm checking uh, the previous number and updating the sequence length. So in total, it's order of n log n plus order of n. So it's order of n log n, right? So that is the time complexity of this algorithm. Now, obviously there are even better ways because it asks for us to find an order of n algorithm. Well, this is not the easiest one, but uh, if we think carefully, we'll actually find a way. So just think about this. This was a sequence of length four, right? And this was a sequence of length one. This was a sequence of length one. Okay, so for any number, let's say this one. Let's take this one, okay? Zero, three, seven, two, zero. Oh, okay, no, not this one. Let's go to the previous number. 100, four, 200. So it's 100, four, 200. And then uh, one, three, two. Okay. So if we put it on a timeline, uh, it will look like this. So it will be uh, one, two, three, four, right? Okay. And then there will be somewhere here, 100, and then there will be 200. The important thing here is on a continuous timeline, you can see that uh, every start of every sequence means that there is nothing. So there is nothing here, right? So there is empty here. So there is no 99 here. There is no, so any number that doesn't have a previous number present in the input means that it is starting a new sequence, right? So as you can see, it's also empty here and there is no zero here, okay? So why don't we, can we do this? Can we just save everything in a say hash map or hash set? So we set everything in a hash map, say one, uh, okay, 100, four, 200, one, three, two. So we put everything in a hash set. Okay, so putting this in everything in a hash set takes how much time? It takes order of n time. Okay, that there goes our first thing, and then we'll start reading from the hash set. So we'll say, Hey, 100, we are reading here. So we'll ask, Hey, do you have 99? If it doesn't have 99, then we can say, Uh, we can immediately say, okay, this is a start of a sequence, right? So no 99, no, that means it leads to say that this is 100, it's, we can say a sequence starts at 100. 
right? This is the start of a sequence. So not having the 99 here in the input list means that this number that which, which are currently we are reading is the start of a sequence. Actually, we are not reading from the hash set. Let's see, read from here, right? We are reading from here. And then we are asking this question. This question is actually going to the hash set and asking like if 99 is there, the answer is no. So that means a sequence is a starting and the sequence length, so the sequence length is one, okay? Next, what you do is we'll check if, uh, if 101 is in the map, right? If the 101 was in the map, we would have updated the sequence length to two. Okay, so 101 is not in the map, so we're not doing anything. Okay, so we are done and the sequence length is max sequence length is one. Okay, next we will go to four. And what four does is it will ask if three is in the map. The answer is it will ask three and it will go check in the map. And the answer is three. So if is that's the case, that means four is not a start of a sequence. So we don't do anything. Okay, so we don't do anything. We don't do anything here. So we are just looking for the start of the sequence. Okay, next we will go to 200 and we'll ask if 199 is in the map, right? If 199 is in the map, we'll ask in the map that the answer is no. That means this is also a start of a sequence. So we'll start a sequence length of uh, one, and then we'll look for 201 and go on. But there is no 201 in the map, so the sequence length remains at one. Okay, next we read uh, one. And then we'll ask, we'll ask if zero is in the map. The answer is no, right? That means we start with a sequence length of one. Then next we will ask like uh, if one is in the map. The answer is yes, right? The answer is yes. So we'll update the sequence length to, sorry, not one. We'll ask if two is in the map. The sequence length will update it to two. Three in the map, yes. The sequence length is three. Four in the map, yes. So the sequence length is four, right? Okay, and the max is also updated to, max sequence length is updated to four, okay? Uh, so we are done, not done yet because we haven't read three yet. So three will ask, hey, if two is in the map, answer is yes, so we don't do anything. We do nothing so because this is not a start of a sequence. Then we go to two and we'll ask if, uh, one is in the map. Hey, if one is in the map, the answer is yes. So we don't do anything. Okay. So the idea here is just identifying the start of the sequence. And if you identify the start of a sequence, just keep on reading and build the sequence to see how long it extends. Also, we identified the start of a sequence at 100. We started to build a sequence here. Identify the length, uh, start of a sequence at 200 and try to build a sequence here. Now, let's see what is the time complexity. The first thing we did is we had put everything in the hash set, right? So that was order of n. That was the first thing. And then we started reading from here. Now, here is the important thing, most important thing here. As you can see, we just kept on every time we just try to identify the start of a sequence and we kept on reading only when the uh, we identified the start of the sequence so as you can see these were the only three places these three places were the only places where we tried to extend that means these we identified these are the start of the sequence because they don't have the previous number in it and in that case from one we tried to find two we tried to find three we tried to find four right but once, if we had got, once we had got like uh, reading three and two, we didn't do anything. We didn't try to extend. Also, when we actually reached 100, we tried to extend, try to 100 and find 101. So also once we try, got 200, we also tried to extend. So from here, as you can see, what you can see is uh, we just keep on reading 
from each of the start of the sequence, right? So in total, we read just order of n times. We don't do start reading from here or here or here, right? Okay, so that means every number is uh, practically read only once. That means we try to extend the sequence in just order of n times, okay? So this is important. This is the most important thing, although it looks like we are doing a quadratic order of any square thing, but actually not. We are just extending if we find a start, potential start of a sequence. Okay, so that's it. Uh, it's an order of n algorithm. Let's try to read the code. Okay, so uh, this is the code. As you can see, we initially have the uh, set and then the max value is set to zero. Uh, or you can just put it you have to ask so here is the thing probably i made a mistake so i have to put say integer dot mean value right because we have to ask here uh, that interviewer if we if this input has only positive numbers or it can have any any number in that case uh, obviously this input particular input had only positive numbers so uh, with max zero it worked but if it had negative numbers this code was wrong okay and then we add uh, the input each of the input values into the set obviously and then we start reading from the input right and every time we are reading a number we'll check if the previous number is also in the input if that is the case only then we do something that means this means if this is true, that means we have reached a start of a potential sequence. Otherwise, we don't do anything. Okay, so that it makes sure that this one uh, this one is order of n. Okay, so if it's a start of a sequence, we start the sequence. We know that the sequence is of length one, and then we set it as a current number, and we keep on checking the next next number and we'll increase the sequence length until we keep on getting the next number in the input and finally we got our sequence length so we update our max okay and finally after we have read everything we now have the max sequence length and we return it so that's it i hope you enjoyed the explanation uh, we'll come back with another video and Good luck till then. Thank you very much for watching.